Good morning, friends, and welcome to Wake Up in the Word. Thanks for joining me today. We're in 2 Kings chapter 2, and we're going to be looking at the last days on earth of the prophet Elijah. So grab a good cup of coffee. Come join me. Craig Bailey coming to you here from Winsboro, South Carolina for a few more days. We'll see how the transition works. But today we're wrapping up the life of Elijah, but this is not the end. We're going to have a great episode tomorrow because Elijah is mentioned after this event many times, especially in the New Testament, and we've got some questions to bring up about that. So as we get to 2 Kings chapter 2, though, we're at one of the most pivotal events in all of the Old Testament. An event that was pointed out even in the title of a book written in 1968 that was, uh, to say the least, skeptical of Christianity. It was entitled Chariots of the Gods with a question mark written by a guy named Eric von Daniken, a German who said, oh, you can explain away everything in not just the Bible, but any other ancient uh, manuscripts or events regarding anything supernatural by the existence of aliens. It's all about the little green men in spaceships. So, you know, this started a whole uh, fad, I would say, that's very popular today. The History Channel even has an extended uh, series entitled Ancient Aliens. So, you know, you look at some of this, though, and let the experts begin to critique it, and they'll take it apart piece by piece. But in the meantime, oh, it's quite popular to believe in these things today. Uh, and I don't mean believe from a biblical standpoint. I mean to believe that anything that we can't explain can be answered by one simple conclusion. The aliens did it. It's a UFO. It's, you know, it's somebody from another planet. So as we get to chapter two, we'll see why this particular event was laid out so specifically as one of those reasons. Because it begins by saying that the time had come for the Lord to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind. So Elijah and Elisha were traveling from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. The Lord is sending me on to Bethel. But Elisha replied, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Remember, Bethel is a very important place in Scripture. It's the place of worship. It's the place where Jacob wrestled with God. Bethel has been a place of worship uh, in ancient times of the patriarchs. So Bethel is very important in that regard. But there's another group we are introduced to in verse 3. We've actually already seen some of these. It says, Then the sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came out to Elisha and said, Do you know that the Lord will take your master away from you today? Now, who are these sons of the prophets? No, they're not the children of the prophets. No, this is like a school of ministry of the day. It's the seminary of the day. The sons of the prophets, these are the ones following the Lord and learning all about him, his power, his prophecies of a Messiah to come, all of the things that are important to the prophets, the preachers of the day, the ministers in God's kingdom. So these guys were in training to be just like Elisha and Elijah. And they came out and said, don't you know what's going to happen today? They were already aware that Elijah is on his way to heaven. Perhaps Elijah has told everybody, this is how my ministry is going to end. And how does Elisha react? He said, yes, I know. Be quiet. <laughs> Shh, don't talk about this. We, we know what's going on today. Just hang on. So Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here. The Lord is sending me to Jericho. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. And then the sons of the prophets who were in Jericho came up to Elisha and said, do you know that the Lord will take your master away from you today? He said, yes, I know. Be quiet. So this thing continues to repeat itself as Elijah is making a tour, a last stop in several key places of ministry in the area in Israel and it seems in each one of these, because of his ministry, there's another group studying the scriptures, focusing on the Lord, known as the sons of the prophets. Remember that. 
Then verse 6, Elijah said to him, Stay here, the Lord is sending me to the Jordan. But Elisha again says, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Now fifty men from the sons of the prophets came and stood observing them at a distance, while the two of them stood by the Jordan. Elijah took his mantle, and he rolled it up, and struck the water, which parted to the right and to the left. Then the two of them crossed over on dry ground. The miracles just never cease with Elijah, do they? And it says, when they had crossed over, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what I can do for you before I'm taken from you. He knew the time was near. Watch Elisha's request. Elisha answered, please let me inherit two shares of your spirit, a double portion, as some uh, translations put it, a double portion of your spirit. Let it fall on me. Look at verse 10. Elijah replied, you've asked for something difficult. If you see me being taken from you, you will have it. If not, you won't. So stick around. <laughs> if you fade away, you go away, you get tired, you get impatient, the blessing won't be yours. Hmm. I think there's a big message right there, isn't there? In verse 11, as they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire with horses of fire suddenly appeared and separated the two of them. Then Elijah went up into heaven in the whirlwind. As Elisha watched, he kept crying out, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. So that's the real story of the chariot of fire that came to get Elisha, Elijah. What does it mean? It means that in something that's typical or in an Old Testament picture of the rapture of the church, Elijah did not die, but was taken directly to heaven. This is not the first time it happened in the Old Testament. As you remember, it was Enoch who walked with God in the book of Genesis, who was just taken to be with God. He did not die as well. Remember that as we deal with something tomorrow about the, the character of these two guys and why some think they are reappearing in the New Testament. But as we close today, I want you to look at this. The tremendous ministry of Elijah had saved a country, had turned it around, and had kept them from following Baal, at least for the time being. It had been a tremendous impact on a nation. It's why many have said what we need are Elijah's. Matter of fact, if you remember, one of the things we'll get to tomorrow is this idea of a forerunner of Christ, that Elijah would return, and as he did in the spirit of John the Baptist, to announce the coming of the Messiah, of Jesus. So all of this pulls itself together in a beautiful way and points us toward the New Testament. My friends, if you just want to dismiss all of this and say, nah, it's just a bunch of aliens, you got to remember that ultimately these folks are still pointing toward the coming Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. Was Jesus just a spaceman who came to perform some miracles and then disappear in a so-called resurrection? Oh, friends, if that's all the hope you've got, then in these days, you are hopeless because, friends, Little green men aren't coming to rescue you, but the Bible does say that the Lord Jesus Christ is not going to let this mess we've made of our world continue, that one day he's coming in something much bigger than a chariot of fire. He's coming with the very armies of heaven and is coming to return and set up his kingdom on this earth. A new heaven and a new earth are on their way. That's the promise you and I are looking for, something that is genuinely supernatural, the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Elijah gives us a beautiful picture of just how impressive that might be. If this is so impressive that Elisha is standing there in wonder at just this one person being taken up into heaven, what's it going to be like when all the saints return with the Lord Jesus as they return from heaven? breaking from that heavenly dimension into ours in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Oh, well, my friends, it's something to look forward to, isn't it? And that's what the chariot of fire reminds us of this morning. You have a great day in the Lord. I'll see you again right here tomorrow as we wake up in God's word and look at some New Testament references to a guy named Elijah.
God bless you. We'll see you then.